This is Oklahoma's own News on 6 with severe weather. They expect me to do well. So there's a high level of pressure that I don't screw up because they're sitting at home and if I say go to their closet, go to a safe room or something like that, that's when they're going to go. And if I'm not saying that and I make a wrong interpretation of a radar and if I would end up causing loss of life, I would feel horrible. So there's a big, big pressure. It's a heavy load that sits on your shoulders that you do not mess up. Uh, so that's cycling, uh, and as it cycles, it'll continue. And again, the good news is small tornado, bad news, it's a tornado. The circulation feature continues to People, if I was broke into their TV program, I'd get hundreds, and I mean literally hundreds if it was an important program, uh, emails telling me how bad I was, how I stunk. I mean, I was nasty, I was, me you know, I was all about myself, and uh, you know, it was like, can't you shut up? You got a big head, you wanna be on TV all the time. So that's one of the issues that we have to deal with. But we do anticipate more storms that will be coming in as we start to work our way through the overnight hours. So Mother Nature is going to make a big alarm clock for us. Some meteorologists might joke a little bit and make you know funny things. I go out live shots and have great fun at different events. But I also know that if there's severe weather that I have to be very much aware of what's going on. But our jobs, we're so it's almost like we're a family doctor. And so they expect us to know about flooding, you know, and about rivers and lakes and growing things, trees, and what do I plant in my garden and things like that. Cause, and so it takes a special, I would say it's kind of a special meteorologist because it's, it takes, it's, it's just like a family doctor. Because right? a family doctor has to know a little bit about everything. Uh, the pressure of, uh, of being in the public eye, you know, every night trying not to mess up and trying to do the best you can and all that. That is one side, the other side is this side and it just makes it so much uh, easier. I have 50 acres here and then I have 40 that I lease from my neighbor, so I don't even have a fence between his place and mine, which is kind of the difference in the grass right there. Living here is kind of like my relaxation, my depressurizing period. As much as it is work, it's physical work, and sometimes physical labor kind of takes away the mental anguish of, of doing things and being around a lot of people at times. So I kind of separate the two and yet they're closely related and the seasons are changing because that hair, he's, he's losing hair left and right right now. So. It has really made me relate to anybody who's outside for a job. And so it makes it more real uh, because a lot of times when you live in the city, you just say what's gonna happen. Yeah, you're gonna be cold and wet, but when you really live this life and then you go into work, you have a lot better relationship with, with those type of people who are gonna be working outside all day for their job. Because I've noticed when I didn't do it, and lived in town, it was, it was there, but now it's a passion, there's a, there's a difference. And I do think that that relationship makes it a lot more potent and a lot better information that comes out. I love this life in the sense that it keeps me connected to my rural roots and also to people who still live in a more rural outdoor environment.